So I'm in, involved with a lot of youth, and there's a faith crisis amongst many of the youth. Many of the youth are dhu wajhain. They have two faces, and the parents have no idea. We see them in the masjid, these youth, they make wudu, they pray, they look like they have khushur, they listen to the Qur'an, they read the Qur'an, then they go to school or on the internet, and they're atheists. They don't even believe in God. They're actually arguing, arguing against the Qur'an on the computer. In the masjid, they're reading a mushaf. In the chat room, they're arguing against the Qur'an. This is very, very common. Why is this happening? Why is there a faith crisis? Well, there's many reasons why. Right? The youth have intellectual curiosity. I met a, a, a brother from Afghanistan who's a Christian pastor, Afghan Christian. This is a big oxymoron. When I think of Afghanistan, I think of Islam. Right? Afghan Christian. It's like saying four-sided triangle. It doesn't make any sense. Jumbo shrimp. It doesn't make any sense. Right? So why did you become a Christian? He said, well, there was, you know, stu Christian students at my college and they were telling me certain things and I tried to rebut them. I said, well, have you studied Islam you know, in detail? He said, I went to Sunday school when I was a kid. So your Sunday school, he said, what about those Christian guys that were trying to convert you? He said, some of them are seminarians, meaning they have you know, master's degrees in divinity. They're sons and daughters of priests and pastors. And your Sunday school education is supposed to help you in that, in that regard, right? So this is a problem with our youth. Our youth, they don't have substantive knowledge, deep analytical knowledge know how to interpret certain things, to put things in perspective. Many of them are in what I call in this Scooby-Doo Islam. Scooby-Doo Islam. Islam is a bunch of jinn and ghost stories. Right? That's all it is. Like this brother came up to me one time and said, I have a very important question for you. Very important, very private question. I said, yes. How do I catch a jinn? So this is your very important question? Yeah. I said, brother, do you play, fud do you play fudger? No. Okay, why don't you start with fudger and then we'll talk about jinn in a few years, inshallah. Right? But the same brother, you know, he talks about computer engineering like he's Bill Gates. Very precise, very technical, very articulate when it comes to some dunua, dunua, uh, some worldly thing, dunua y thing. But when it comes to the deen, jinn story, Scooby-Doo religion, right? this type of thing. Why? Because they don't take the time to study the deen. The deen is not a simple thing. If you, if you go to, it's simply, it's a, it's a religion that everyone can grasp at some level. That's true. But in this context, we're, not being, ch we're being challenged, right? Like my parents in, back home in the mother countries, there was no internet. They didn't meet atheists, right? Everyone was Muslim. The questions were regarding orthopraxis. They're, they're fiqhi issues. Like, you know, how do I pray? What happens if this happens? What if I'm fasting and I vomit? And these types of things. These were the issues of the day in that generation. Right? But nowadays, the youth in this generation, it's not orthopraxis, it's orthodoxy. The question is not, what is Islam? Uh, or how do I practice? Why Islam is the question now. Why? Is there a God? This is a question. A brother asked his parents one time. Is there, how do you know there's Allah? His father said to him, Astaghfirullah, go make wudu and pray, and Allah will reveal the answer to you. You can't even give, him, you can't even give this kid an answer. Why? Give some evidence. This is how he's geared. He's American. He's westernized. He lives in the Occident, not in the Orient. This is how he's, uh, how he's been uh, socialized into thinking about aqidah, creed, orthodoxy. Why should I believe? He's going online and, and, and listening to Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins, right? These uh, scholars that teach at you know, Cambridge and Oxford that are anti-Muslim, not even atheist, they're anti-theist. Like one of them said, there is no God and I hate him. They're listening to these types of people talk about God, talk about Islam, right? And they go to their father, he says this and this, what do I do? Go make wudu. Go make wudu. What is that going to do? Go make wudu, don't worry about it. Don't ask these questions, right? Because that's how he was taught when he was back home, but that doesn't work. They want, they, there's intellectual curiosity. They want more substantive, substantive answers. And then we have another crisis, and we'll end with this, inshallah ta'ala, because we're out of time. There are some youth who rise above this type of discourse, and they, and they engage in deep study, and they want to be good Muslims. They have high himma, spiritual ambition, and then they go to their father. The sister goes to her father and says, I want to wear hijab. And he says, no, you're not allowed to wear hijab. Sorry, you can't do that. He says, no, but it's fardain. I want to wear hijab. And the father says to her, I will answer Allah on that day. I'll take it up with God on the yawm al qiyamah This is the answer they get from her father. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اِتَّبِعُوا سَبِيلَنَا وَالْنَحْمِ الْخَطَايَكُمْ It's mentioned in the Quran, Surah Al-Ankabut, 
that the unbelievers, they say to the believers, follow our way, we'll take your sins. Don't worry about it. We'll vicariously atone for you. This is Christianity. What are you talking about? I'll, I'll answer Allah. You're going to answer Allah on the day when, when everyone is terrified on that day? You're going to answer for your daughter? Right? You're going to run from your daughter. Ya akhi. You're going to run. Flee, flee. يَوْمِ لَفِرُّ الْمَرُّ مِنْ أَخِي وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي And she's going to flee from you. Or you get this, this brother who wanted to study. This is very common. This just happened. His brother wanted to, to study when he was in high school. He wanted to study the dean. Right? He's junior in high school. So he went to his parents. His parents said, no, you cannot study the dean. Not even a little bit. You have to go get your master's degree first. Seven years later, the brother gets his master's degree. His parents call me. So you remember that brother a few years ago who wanted to say, yeah, yeah, he's an atheist. What do we do about our son now? I said, well, seven years ago you told him to go get, get his master's degree. He probably went to some university and listened to these secular professors talk about Islam in a derogatory way. You should have let him study a little bit back then. I can't do anything for you now. I can talk to him. When we talk to him, he's gone. Yani, khalas. It's going to be very difficult. Right? So we have to be balanced people. We have to be balanced people. We have to think about our communities. We have to support the communities. The first thing the Prophet ﷺ did in Medina after he took a census of the city because he wanted to know who he was dealing with was that he built a masjid. And the masjid isn't simply a place of sajda, even though that's linguistically what it means. It was a community center. The masjid was a community center where the youth could go and they can ask questions and they can learn. And this is very, very important that we support these types of places, right? Because the youth have answers, and if they don't get them here, don't think they're not getting them from somewhere else. The ulama say you're in one of two states. Either you're, being, either you're calling people towards something, or you're being called to something. That's it. Either you're calling people towards something, or you're being called to something.